My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. You know what? I've been thinking all weekend. This is a market that deserves to be hated. It is virtually nothing going for it except misery and an occasional desire to give misery company. Sadly, the indices are a, a complete and total reflection of everything that's really happening in the world today. And that's why even though we're oversold here, even though we can put on meager rallies that look terrific at the time, we just can't seem to escape the jaws of the bear. Sell, 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 sell. That includes daily today. Sell, sell, sell. Dow advanced 27 points. That's a big dip, 0.39%. But the NASDAQ tumbled 1.2%, including a lot of your favorites, like an Airbnb, a Dash, a Block. I mean, these things are just getting pummeled. Now, there's a very simple reason why the bear keeps mauling us. It's because we have no right to be going higher. The forces aligned against the stock market are incredibly powerful, and each day a new one comes up to smack you right across the face with negativity. Last night, before I finished work for tonight's show, I checked the overnight markets. I like to do that. They look strong. I was kind of surprised. Then again, hey, the market finished well Friday, so maybe there was something to build on. Of course, I was fooling myself. I can tell you right now, this kind of wrong-headed thinking has characterized the whole move down. Something to build on. What a joke. You, you can't build on quicksand. Sure enough, I wake up at 4 a.m. and the futures are down. Why? Well, China's posted some ter- terrible consumer numbers. But did anyone expect anything different? Vast swaths of the Chinese economy are in lockdown. How the heck is business supposed to be good? You think they're making a lot of stuff? Selling a lot of stuff? People in Shanghai can't even leave the house. From the West, it looks like the only thing they do is test each other for COVID, not a GDP expander. What is incredible is that our stocks still sell off on this stuff again and again. And that's because there's hope and then the hope is dashed. But I understand it. Do you want to be the person who's not in when President Xi finally says, OK, we're inoculating everyone with the mRNA vaccines we stole from whoever? The market would be up so huge that day that you'd be kicking yourself if you aren't in stocks. Yet it's so obvious that she has no intention of relenting. So what's the point of hope? Then this morning after working out, I read some article in the British paper, I don't know, which says that Putin has blood cancer, at least according to some unreliable nameless oligarch. For a moment, I think to myself, geez, that'd be something. Who, who would possibly prosecute this war if Putin dies? It's so pointless that you'd have to think the Russian generals would back off if they didn't have Putin's gun to their head. So of course, you're hopeful. But then one more gigantic American company, McDonald's, pulls out of Russia completely, and you know there's nothing going right there. Unless Ukraine or some disaffected oligarch manages to assassinate Putin, there's no end game here. If Putin wants to turn this into Russia's Vietnam, he can keep throwing men into the meat grinder for ages. Why not? We did. As long as this lunatic is alive and in charge, we're not going to get any good news from the stock market. We might get more good news for Ukraine. But it's not like our market is rallying on reports of Russian retreats. It hasn't yet. You have to expect a massive army call-up soon, which would have the advantage of at least informing the Russian people how horribly the war is going. But that's not going to topple the Russian government. You've got to understand, dictators can't afford to lose wars that they themselves started. It makes them look weak, and a weak dictator doesn't live very long. That's why Putin has every incentive to keep this war going forever, even if that's catastrophic for the country he's running. I don't even know if he cares. And then there's us. I come in this morning, Dave Costin, he's an incredibly good analyst from Goldman and just a, good, just a good guy, has come up with a list of stocks that are extremely cheap based on absolute basis and relative treasuries. But it's also in the context of cutting the price target for the S&P 500. Oh, huge and correct bear, Mike Wilson, the chief investment officer of Morgan Stanley, has decided that the Halcyon Interregnum is over and the bear is ready to roll again. If, like me, you were foolish enough to believe he might just declare victory and go positive, well, you're kicking yourself right now. I read, I said, oh, Mike Wilson, maybe he's, maybe he's going to declare No, he's sticking with it. Oh, and then, here's some real cynicism. If it matters, JetBlue launches a hostile takeover for competitor spirit. Competitor. Like the, they're like next to each other in every single airport, so they do go at it, to, uh, hammer and tongs. But now it's supposed to be together. Yeah, sure. I'm almost falling off my air on chair laughing. Do these lawyers and investment bankers even for one minute believe, one minute, 
that the Justice Department, this Justice Department, will let a deal as blatantly anti-competitive as this one go through? Doesn't JetBlue know that the nation elected a fellow by the name of Joe Biden in part to stop corporate consolidation and encourage competition? How cynical are these advisors? One of the reasons why we've had such terrible supply chain problems that's not talked about at all except for right now is that we've let so many companies merge, there just isn't enough competition to build new plants and try to take market share. It's not worth it. That game ended years ago. Uh, when previous justice departments couldn't anticipate that there might be a day when we wanted companies to compete against each other in a way that benefited consumers instead of hurting them. Of course, the people advising JetBlue on this takeover bit of some sort of intellectual twist they hope will budge the Justice Department. I say, give me a break. I studied closely with Phil Arita, who's the great, late great antitrust professor at Harvard Law, and I have to laugh at these people for thinking this deal will pass muster. They don't know as much as I do. It's embarrassing. I'm giving these guys D's and sharing with you how ill-advised their thinking is. Then we watch a clip from former Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blackfeld and about how a recession should, could occur and we should be prepared for it. But what do we do as consumers to pre prepare for it? Line up a second job in advance, right? sell all our stocks? I don't know. Prepare for it. And fall shelter? I, I prepare. Okay, I'll prepare. Finally, if all of that negativity wasn't enough, of course, Bitcoin continues its now legendary collapse as people frantically try to figure out why they even bought it in the first place other than the fact it was going up. Now, here's what's amazing. Of course, the market actually goes down, thanks to all those negatives. But then, like, midday, because of all the hope out there, some of the averages start going higher, and then that hope gets the hope machine going again. We start wondering if Russia might be pulling out or she's coming to a census of the lockdown or, or all the big retail earnings this week, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, Target, are going to be great, and we didn't think about that. Or maybe even that commodity prices might finally come down, which they're not. Yep, this market has two things going for it. One, everyone knows that almost every piece of news is awful. And two, every dip is used to produce it used to produce spectacular results when we bought the dips, right? So now we think, why should it be any different? Are there bargains, as Dave Costin suggests? Absolutely. Tons of them. Too many of them. Are there other stocks and cryptocurrencies that are still way too high without any sense of where they can go other than lower? Absolutely. Oh, I mean, by the way, can I mention that Twitter's become a fiasco of epic proportions as Elon Musk tortures the company's board and makes a mockery of the entire process while costing people billions and having the time of his life? The point of this litany is simple. A rally based solely on the fact that everything's going wrong is a rally that cannot and will not stand. It has no staying power unless something actually goes right. And the bottom line, so far, nothing's going right. So stop pretending otherwise and just get used to the darn torture, because that's exactly what this market has in mind for you. Let's go to David in Texas, please. David. Hey, Jim. Booyah from Texas. Uh, booyah. Thanks for calling. What's going on? Hey, Jim. My stock is GNRC. Generac recently reported a top and bottom line beat. They also increased 2022 guidance. What are your thoughts on GNRC? You know, Jim? I've been wrong on this. I liked it. I had it in the bullpen for my charitable trust. I took it out because I felt that people thought it was just too connected to housing. But our grid is so darn awful in this country. Ultimately, I think that you're going to make money if you buy Genrac. John in New York. John. Hey, how are you, Jim? John, what's uh, going on? Back, back in the days, we worked with uh, Larry Cuddle on your Cuddle on Kramer TV show. Yeah, I, had a t I still got a T-shirt from it. They gave me a T-shirt. Nice. Holds up well. It's blue with yellow. Go ahead. Hey, listen, so I'm working on a comedy short film, and I wanted to talk about the stock service now, ticker N-O-W. All right, now, service so, now is a really a real tough one, John, because I can tell you they had the best quarter of any of the large cap tech companies I deal with. The best. I will tell you that Bill McDermott continues to win gigantic contracts. But I will tell you, as part of the bear market that we're in, the stock gets no credit. One day it will be, which is why I would never tell you to sell service now. But understand, its stock is not a reflection of the business, which is quite good. And I think will remain so. How about we go to Richard in Maryland? Richard. Hey, Jim, it's a pleasure. Long, long time, first time. And thank you for taking our call. Of course. Thank you for calling, man. What's up? Yeah, Jim, during the pandemic, my wife, a very smart therapist who generally has few opinions about stocks, said to me, listen, I'm seeing clients on Zoom. You should buy it. I didn't listen. But now Zoom has come way down, and I'm thinking it with pilot shortages, jet fuel and ticket prices going sky high, business travel may level off quickly, and hybrid work arrangements are the new, new normal. Despite competition, Zoom may be a beneficiary. The company is profitable, its PE is not inflated, and it has a sizable cash holding. Is Zoom a long-term 
buy here? Our, our viewers are so smart. And Richard, everything you said is true. Uh, the P mobile is a little too, too high, but it's, uh, you can say it's 23. Here's the problem. Uh, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft's gotten very, very aggressive. Aside from Dell is a very aggressive guy. And as much as I admire the work of Eric Yuan, believe it or not, the stock's not down enough to be able to buy with great confidence. I wish I could say otherwise, because I think Eric is a tremendous business person. And uh, my stepson worked for Zoom, and it was just a fantastic outfit. But the stock, I still think, is just too high priced. All right, guys, I, all I'm telling you is that it's torturous, all right? You and I know it, so like, let's just accept it, right? Because that's exactly what the market has in mind for you. Now, on man on tonight, we're going to try some interesting things. New course pivoting. It's announced it's acquiring CHI over overhead doors from KKR, $3 billion deal. I'm learning more about the Steelmaker's latest edition with the CEO. Then uh, we're doing a new list of accidental high yielders because the stock market has come down. And then you asked during the lightning round about a company called Massimo. So we're checking in with the company's top brass. They, too, are pivoting to a new style. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.